Hey, 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 what is going on? Comfort killers, I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name. I am sitting here in front of my calendar, and I cannot believe it's April 5th. Oh, yeah, I can't believe it. It was just a week ago, literally, a little more, but let's just say a week ago for podcast sake, that I left the nine to five, I walked out, I cleaned up, but I didn't leave in such a way that you see on uh, Instagram and uh, the internet where people just get on the mic and say, F this, I'm out of here. No, 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 no. Uh, we don't want to do that. Of course, we always never, we, well, we don't want to burn our bridges to anywhere, to anyone. You know, sometimes you have a, a friend, and we spoke about this in the last podcast. Your friends will disappear from you once you start raising your consciousness. But it doesn't mean we're going to call our friends and be like, you low-life scum. You, you're you the reason why I'm where I'm at. No, 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 no. <laughs> that person, too, could develop in self-discovery and get to the level you are, if not more, or pass you. Next thing you know, your friend, the one that you're calling a scumbag, is the one hiring you. So you never want to burn your bridges. You always want to leave places and dick with, with high ethics, all right, with high ethics, so definitely, it was fun though, walked out, it didn't really hit me until, when was it, a couple of days ago, like, whoa, wow, I don't have a job, my only job is to create, um, create the comfort killers in my business to the ultimate max, max. and that's what I'm doing daily here, and uh, speaking of daily, last night, I was, you know, I'm, I'm on the website, I'm on the comfortkillers.com and I'm like, oh man, this is, I, the, the, the purpose of the site, I don't believe that, you know, it's getting through, I'm, I might have to change this and, and I'm looking around at how I could change it, how I could better suit the market and the industry that I'm in by giving them the programs that I have and just letting that become forefront and I always ask the question, you know, in business, you know, the, the famous janitor, right, that, that knows how to do everything in the business, knows the accounting, knows how to do the sales, makes the cold calls, does the marketing, does everything in the business. When that person, when that janitor dies, God forbid, or decides to move on, there is no business. So I want to talk today about making sure that you're setting yourself up for success in case you're going into a world of business, a world of entrepreneurship, because, hey, listen, I'm, I made the mistake. The one-man band man, once that string, the last string plays, that's it. We only came to see the one-man band man. Could you put someone else in there to play those strings, to play those drums, to play that guitar, to play the keys, to sing while you're out doing someone else, doing someone else, when you're out doing something else, and creating more businesses. The best way to develop a business early on, and I know it's just you, it's just you, it's just your computer, it's just your Instagram, it's just your uh, Amazon, FBA, it's just whatever. You're looking at it right now as it's just me. It's little old me building this thing. I'm imploring you to think bigger than just that little thing. Because if you pull yourself out, do you have a business? Ask yourself that question. If you pull yourself out of the business, is there a business there or was it just you're self-employed? That's it. So as I'm creeping out of the nine to five mentality, as I'm creeping into the self-employed mentality, I don't want to stay there long. I do not want to stay there long. I am building my business so that I can be pulled out and the business is still running full-fledged. Now, a lot of solopreneurs don't like this because they're all about lifestyle design and, hey, you know what? I'm living my life the way I want to and every, the whole world is waiting on your new blog post or your new course or your new this or your new that. And once you're out of it, it's done. So that's why, I don't know if subconsciously, last night I'm looking over my website. I don't know what happened. I moved and my website was pretty slow. So I was like, okay, I got to get, I got to get some new hosting here. Um, I looked around, went to, for some new hosting, clicked two buttons, clicked two wrong buttons, my entire website was gone. 
I mean, I'm talking about 200 articles. I'm talking about all my videos. I'm talking about all the work that I put in that website since 2016. In one click of a button, it's gone. And I know I could email a few people, get on the phone, figure out what's going on, and maybe get some of that stuff back. But I'm looking at it as, why did this happen in the first place? I'm not, I'm not no novice around the computer, around the internet, around web, around design, around uh, HTML, around coding. I'm not, I'm not a novice, you know? I'm good at all these areas. The thing is, I clicked the button and it just left, okay? It just disappeared. I sat there for a, literally like a half a second and I said, you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is, you know? And that was my subconscious saying, okay, everything is renewed. Uh, developing your market size. Do you know the difference between an industry and a market? Okay. The industry is the global, the global aspect. Okay. Are you in the, uh, matchmaking industry? Are you in the phone app industry? Are you in the tech industry? Are you in the real estate industry? And then there's a market. Okay. And then you could get a niche within the market. So my goal was, okay, developing the niche from the the grounds up, okay, the avatar, who am I speaking to, who's out there, okay, if you're out there, you're listening to this right now, do me a solid and email me right away, straight away, Stacy at the comfortkillers.com, it means so much to me to know who you are, I know for a fact, I've been doing a little bit of research, that more women than men, you know, they gravitate to my, to my, um, to my uh, teachings, they gravitate to my principles, they gravitate to my company, more women than men, okay? And women between the ages of 29 and 34 years old. A little older as well and as I'm starting to pull more data in. And uh, how am I getting this data? Am I talking with my customers? Am I talking with my viewers? Am I talking? I, hey, listen, this is all that we have to do to figure out our niche, the market, and all of that. So the first step, if you're going to start a business, is... Think about this thing, okay? And now, now now, that I'm out of a job, I'm like, now I'm so damn systematic about it. Before I was like, whoo, I'll jump out the window uh, real quick. But now it's a little more strategy, a little more system because it's me that I depend on. It's me that I have to create. So a lot time that's wasted is, time, is money that's lost, honestly. Time that's wasted is money that's lost. So I'm helping you out early on to say, okay, you want to start a business? Great. I freaking support you. I encourage you. I want you to. It feels great to own something, to be the creator of something. Okay. But the first thing is build a business without you in it. Build a bit. You are your personal brand. I, I get that 100%. I'm the personal brand. But as I look at things, the, the comfort killers is so tied with me, Stacey A. Cross, that how do you separate the two? How does Stacey A. Cross put someone else there? And the company is ah, ah, still there, still going, still has a system and a strategy. So build it with you out of mind, okay? Uh, but of course, you're going to be in the business. We all know that. But I'm talking about building the framework of it so that if you were able to expand, you can't do the everyday task. You can't write a million emails all the time. You can't send that. You can't do this. You can't do that. Um, so definitely think about that in another aspect because I did. And right now I'm like, whoa, it really means something to me. And then the second thing is, what is your industry? What is your market? What is your niche? And then build an avatar. An avatar is your ideal customer, your ideal viewer, your ideal purchaser, your ideal user your ideal lead. Um, these are, this is your avatar. So build that person. Is it a male? Is it a female? Is it a male and a female? What are the ages? What's the demographics? Uh, you know, is the person in college is the person earning, uh, you know, their, their wages. Is it 24,000? Is it 36,000? Is it 88,000? Is it a hundred plus K? All of these information, all this information is very pertinent when it comes to building your business, and I'm talking very early on, okay? Uh, the next thing that you need to do is figure out how can I build authority in my space? Now, 
Uh, this brings me back to my book. I just released a book, just published a book, released. I usually release things. So now when I publish it's like, ah, oh, I got to figure out this word. I just published a book, The Comfort Killer is Your Journey to Success, How to Change Your Life Using Tools You Already Have. Just did that. It's right now on Amazon. Type in The Comfort Killers. I have to figure out, when you type in The Comfort Killers on Amazon, Amazon is confused. The things you want to talk about, bug killers and stuff like that, and serial killers. I'm going to work on that. You don't worry. Just keep scrolling down. It should be halfway through the page and then order the book. Now, that's how you build authority. In authority, the word author is blaring out, glaring out. Like you can see the word author. Why author? Now, as an author, people, if, if you write an article, okay, and you get the article featured in any upstanding publication, let's say entrepreneur, let's say Forbes, let's say, you know, whatever you ink, you know, success magazine, you could use that article as leverage, right? Into the industry that you're, you're targeting in, into the niche that you want to be in, right? Whether it's speaking to uh, life insurance agents, whether it's speaking to real estate agents, whether it's speaking to car dealerships, auto dealerships, automotive sales, whatever it is, that is your leverage point into the industry. Now, a book now, here's, here's the matter. It doesn't even matter if the pages are empty. Once someone sees you hold up a book, it doesn't matter. It's like, whoa, this person wrote a book. This person has authority in their space, the self-improvement space, the per, uh, personal growth space, the performance space. That's why I wrote the book, okay? So I wrote the book, you know, first thing to get all that stuff on my head because it surely helped me. And second thing I wrote the book is because I know that it is a tool to get to the space that I'm getting in. So let's say you do landscaping, right? Let's say you do landscaping like states. Okay, you're telling me this. I, I'm, I'm in landscaping. Spring's coming. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get my business up and I'm going to do it with two lawnmowers and a friend of mine. Okay, good. Great. So the first thing that I would do if I was in that space right now is write a report that talks about the three different types, the three different types of maybe fertilizer, the three different types of landscaping uh, techniques, the three principles to get your lawn up and running in this or get the garden going in here or the beautiful design of become the auth the authority in that landscaping industry. Who else you know as a landscaper has a book that they could offer maybe for free to a potential customer? Oh, wow, they're reading this stuff. They're getting valuable information or a report or the top 10 blah, blah, blah you should do to um, avoid brown grass. You see what I'm saying? I would love that. Oh, wow, if I was the type that cared so much about a lawn, so much about the, the, the beauty of it, so much about the summer smell of my backyard, so much about the visual aesthetics and beauty of my garden, I would love that. And then I would call you because you are the authority in your space. So this is what I'm talking about when it comes to this. I know this is a different type of podcast. I know that. But I know that there's a lot of people out there that wants to start a business and don't know where to start. I'm just giving you three, three quick ways, okay? What's your industry? What's your market? Grab the niche, okay? Then get the authority as fast as you can, whether that's writing articles on the subject, okay? Then you become an uh, expert at that subject, a subject matter expert. And then an authority piece, get a 100-page book, 200-page book, write about that piece, offer it as a bonus to your potential clients, and then go in the space hands first. So how do you get these clients? How do you get these people then? You're looking around, okay? Well, where, where are most people spending their time? 20 minutes a day right now on Facebook. 20 minutes per session. I'm sorry, not per day. 20 minutes per session right now. Instagram has over 900 plus, you know? 900 plus million people. And we're talking about Facebook. They have about that a year, months, in, a, in about 2 million a month or even more sign up to Facebook. 
So you use these tools that you have. You have Facebook advertising, you have Instagram advertising, you have Google ads, and then you, you since you made an avatar, it is dumb easier to get to your audience versus wasting time with the numb nuts that don't care about your lawn, um, your landscaping business, right? They don't, they live in apartments, all right? So you could really narrow it down and truly get to the bottom of the gristle, but I'm talking about this because my website was deleted. So I get, I actually get a, a nice clean start at uh, building this website for my target audience specifically. And I know that's you because you are listening. Listen, if you haven't heard, I started a new show on YouTube. So go over to youtube.com slash the comfort killers and subscribe. The show's on Wednesdays and Fridays. I try to, by the time I keep, by the time I finish, you know, fiddling with the, the lives and this and that and the, the machineries, I'm usually on live at 10 a.m. It's about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour show. And we're all, we're talking about things like this, trusting the process, you know, because other people did it. Maybe they stumbled their toe, they scratched their knee, they burnt their wrist, they got broke, they're in debt, and now they're going to teach you. And they trusted the process. So we have about five segments in that show. You know, uh, I talk about a story where, where whatever word the topic is, how it ties in to the story and my personal experience or an experience of someone else. So you're going to be getting data. Then we go right into the good news section. There's too much bad news out there and I don't want to flood you with any more. So we're talking about good news. And I usually pull the good news from those in my network, from those people that are inside, they're in here, they're with me, they're listening to this right now. If you have any good news well, what's happening in your world, email hello at thecomfortkillers.com so I can get that on the live show streaming Wednesdays and Fridays on YouTube. Then we give us some giveaways. What's a show without a giveaway? What's a morning show without a giveaway? It's nothing, okay? So I, I definitely have some giveaways. And if you're listening to this right now and you don't have my book, I would love if you subscribe. If you subscribe, just shoot me an email. Let me see that you subscribe to uh, The Comfort Killer's YouTube page, and I will put you in a drawing. I will put you in a drawing to win the Comfort Killer Starter Pack, which is a t-shirt, the journal, and my new book. I really wanted to come on here to give you a chapter out of my book today because I did an audio book, but I'm going to leave that for something special when the new website is up. And I, I'm a monster, so I'll probably have that up by this weekend. And then, of course, the last segment, we have Q&A. So your questions that you're sending in to hello at thecomfortkillers.com, they're going to get answered. Or if you're live watching at the same time commenting, they will get answered. So definitely you do want to subscribe right now over at youtube.com slash, slash the comfort killers. The show is called trust the process and, and really understand when we're going to go live and be a part of that. Cause it's really going to be dynamic. It's a huge show. It's going to be a huge success. I really believe in it and trusting the process is something I've done from day one. So it means so much to me and uh, that's it. That's all I have for you today. I have to go because there's so, so much on my calendar that I must get through. Started a gym regimen yesterday. and You could see the whole progress and my progress on the, in the gym, um, at, on my Instagram at Stacey A. Cross. If you don't have me on Instagram, hope this podcast reached the person it needed to reach. And I love that you're here with me. I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name.